Whoa. Hi, I'm Vincent, and I'm a product design engineer. One second. <sighs> That's better. This is a $600 toaster oven marketed as one of the best in the world. And this is a $100 toaster oven with all the standard basic features. I'm gonna be testing these out, breaking down why they're designed the way they are. Not necessarily to say that one is better than the other, but to examine variation in toaster oven technology in general. This is tried and tested toaster ovens. I'll be doing a series of tests today to see how each oven holds up through a wide array of uses. But before that, let's talk about how toaster ovens work in general. Traditionally, heating elements are made up of a metal alloy that's coiled up. This causes high resistance, so when electricity runs through those coils, the elements heat up. Both these ovens use more modern heating elements made from quartz. Quartz elements heat using infrared radiation, just like the sun. The Black & Decker has two heating elements on top and two on the bottom, while the June oven has four elements on top and two on the bottom. First, I'm testing toast. I'm gonna to be putting six slices of white bread in each toaster. We're looking for even heating across the entire surface of the toast. This is a good way of creating a thermal map so we can show where there are hot spots or cold spots. When I say thermal map, think about how the aliens see things in the movie Predator. Something like that, but you know, with toast. Let's do this. I'm going for a medium brown toast here. So on the Black & Decker, I'm gonna use the toast setting at level five out of seven. As for the June, it has a camera and smart functionality. You can see that once I close the door, the camera automatically recognized that I'm trying to make toast. I'm gonna go ahead and use the touch screen, select the white bread setting. It's going to walk me through some tips here. It's telling me to use the wire rack, put the bread directly onto the shelf in the middle shelf position. And it's telling me that it's gonna take five and a half minutes to toast this bread. If I wanted to get really fancy, I could use the June app to set my toast from anywhere in the world. The Black & Decker didn't tell me how much time it would take, but it lasted for about six minutes. Okay, our toast is done. Let's check them out. I like the results that the Black & Decker gave me. Fairly even medium brown toast with just a few cool spots on the outer edges. The June was a little bit lighter than I would have wanted, while the left and the right show even more heat loss at the edges. But I did have the option to continue cooking after the fact. I'm flipping the toast to see how it toasted on the bottom. On the Black & Decker, I could see that the rear elements didn't do such a good job toasting. And on the June, I'm seeing actually more consistency across the bottom of the toast. You do have a bit of a cold spot, but generally better distribution across all the pieces of bread. Ultimately, even toasting is going to come down to even heat distribution from the heating elements in each of these toasters. Although the June has more heating elements than the Black & Decker, this test shows that neither has perfect heat distribution on the top or the bottom, which means you'll have to experiment with other settings such as cook time to get your desired outcome. Because the June is a smart device, you can adjust the settings and it will remember your settings for future use. Regardless if you're gonna be buying a $100 toaster oven or a $600 toaster oven, these appliances are gonna take a bit of tinkering. You're gonna to have to learn how to adjust your settings to get what you want. Even with the smartest oven in the world, that's a fact. Next up, the baking test. Typically when you bake, you're only heating from the bottom of the food. But now we're gonna be using the convection function on both of these ovens. Convection is the use of airflow to distribute heat. Simply said, that means that both of these ovens have fans in them. The Black & Decker has a single fan in the rear while the June oven has two fans. Today, we're gonna to be baking sugar cookies. This is store-bought dough and we have six cookies for each tray. Ideally, we're looking for a lightly brown cookie with crispy edges, but not overly burnt. Let's bake some cookies. The Black & Decker has a dedicated cookie button, but for my test, I'm actually gonna use the bake function because the cookie setting doesn't turn on the convection fan. And I know using the convection fans is gonna give me a better result. So I set the toaster to bake at 350 degrees for 12 minutes. The Black & Decker also has a preheat period, so I'm gonna wait for it to preheat before I put the cookies inside. For the June, I wanted to use one of the smart programs, but it actually didn't include a program for sugar cookies. So I found a program for chocolate chip cookies that I thought would be close enough. I told it that I was working with store-bought cookie dough at room temperature, and it was off to the races. About eight minutes in on the Black & Decker, I noticed that the cookies at the back of the tray were browning faster than the ones at the front of the tray. So I opened the oven and flipped it just so I could see if I could get some even heating. Let's see how they did. The June cookies are lighter in general. The rear cookies are a bit darker than the front cookies. The Black & Decker, a pretty even result across all the cookies. If I hadn't been watching and just used a preset, I think it would have been pretty diff different results. So let's talk about heat loss here, especially on the Black & Decker. Halfway through cooking those cookies, I knew that we were getting some heat loss through the front of the oven. And that makes sense because the front of the oven is just a thin plate of glass. So while the convection feature in the Black & Decker gives you the benefit of distributing the heat, it doesn't make up for the fact that you have no insulation properties in the front of the oven. You still see the science of this heat loss in the June. The front side is 
is still a little bit lighter than the rear, but it's much less apparent because the June has a much thicker door with double planes of glass. With that said, the June isn't perfect. There are these vents here to allow that heated air to escape. If those vent holes weren't here, you might be causing a pressure vessel, your door might explode, and you'd have more problems than not baked cookies. But now, the real cookie test. Oh, they're stuck. Oh my gosh. So what's nice about the June, it's a nonstick tray. So they come kind of right off. They're both really good. I like the June cookies better. This one's almost like wafer because it's so thin. For the Black & Decker, I'd probably try maybe the amount of time I'd have to adjust just to get it to be a little bit lighter in color. This is the nature of baking. It requires your time and attention to get the results that you want. In the end, you can get similar results with either of these machines. It'll just take a little bit more time and energy with the Black & Decker. But if you're fine with that, that's okay. As for the June, it's a pretty hands-off process. You can set it and forget it. I think there really is a value at the time savings that I would have with something like the gym. But is it $600 worth of time savings? That's a tougher question. Next, let's test the roasting function. By roasting, we're talking about heating something at a very high temperature for a long period of time. We're gonna be roasting whole chickens. These are two pretty standard chickens that you can find at the supermarket. They're between three and four pounds. We're looking for results that you would get in a standard oven. A chicken that's cooked all the way through, moist on the inside, with a nice crispy exterior. We're gonna be roasting the chickens at 350 degrees until the internal temperature reaches 165 degrees. This is a great test because it'll show us how efficient these ovens are and whether or not they can actually reach the high temperatures and hold them over a long period of time. On the Black & Decker, I put the chicken directly on top of the broiling pan and sheet pan that came with the oven. The June oven came with a sheet pan, but didn't come with a roasting rack, so I had to provide one myself. I could have also bought one directly for June for an additional $30. But who wants to pay that after shelling out $600 already? I'm gonna be using the lower rack on both of these ovens. It's really the only way that they can fit. For the Black & Decker, we're gonna be using the bake function with the convection fan on. Similar to when we bake the cookies, the toaster has to preheat before it starts the cooking process. For the June, we'll be following the program that they provide. That program makes use of a temperature probe that's included with the June oven. This side of the probe goes into the chicken, while this side of the probe gets connected directly into the June so that we can monitor the temperature. The June already sees that I have a chicken in here. It's telling me that the internal temperature of the chicken is currently 45 degrees. With a three and a half pound bird cooking at 350 degrees, we're looking at about an hour cook time. The June's gonna monitor that automatically. For the Black & Decker, we'll have to use our own thermometer. I decided to cover both these chickens loosely with foil about halfway through cooking. I started getting concerned that these were really close to the heating elements and I didn't want them to burn. So the June took about 55 minutes to get the temperature, which is actually lower than it originally told me it would take. While the Black & Decker, I pulled it out after an hour to check temperature and it wasn't there yet, so I put it in for another half an hour. After an hour and a half of total cooking, it was done. The June is giving us a nice, evenly brown chicken. It looks almost perfect. The Black & Decker chicken is definitely much paler. What these results tell me is that the Black & Decker probably never got to 350 degrees and definitely couldn't hold that temperature over time. If it was performing and reaching those temperatures, this chicken would have been done within the hour. What's great about the June is that with its internal temperature probe, it takes a lot of the guesswork out. The Black & Decker doesn't have this feature, but you can make up for it with third-party products like this one right here that I used at home. This is a sensor that you can put into your chicken and it sends information wirelessly to your phone. This green line shows the temperature of the oven is at 252 degrees for most of the cooking time, so much lower than 350 degrees that we set it to. We know that the Black & Decker loses a lot of heat through the front door. The June is bigger, it has two fans, it has really good insulated properties, and in general, it has more powerful heating elements. Let's talk wattage. A watt is a unit of power or the amount of energy an appliance needs to function. The June is rated at 1800 watts. It has six heating elements rated at 450 watts each. I know that math doesn't add up. It should add up to a total of 2700 watts of power. The June isn't running at its maximum potential because it really can't. In any residential environment, you wouldn't be able to run the June without tripping the circuit. This is another aspect of June's intelligence. Depending on the cooking method, it controls how much power is going to each heater. The Black & Decker is rated at 1500 watts. With four heating elements, that means that each heating element should have 375 watts of power. So, less heating power. That said, it is at temperature and it did do the job. Black & Decker looks good. It had a funny feeling when I poked the fork through it. It felt a little rubbery at the skin. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Pretty good. The June's a little crispier, but not by much. I think what's cool about this is that when people think about toaster ovens, they don't usually think about roasting a whole chicken. You can choose to spend a lot of money and get this feature, or you can get something that isn't as expensive and still be able to get a good result. If you're going to be cooking big, dense items with a lot of mass and longer cooking times, you'll need something with high wattage and good insulation. 
Next, let's test frozen foods. And we're doing this test because it's probably one of the most used functions in a toaster oven. Getting a frozen snack, popping it in the toaster oven, and eating them at about two in the morning. And to test that, I'm gonna reheat some tater tots. I'm more of a french fry guy, but I'll allow the tot test. Ideally, what we're looking for here is for the tots to defrost quickly and reheat just as fast. We want a nice, crispy, golden tot. So on the Black & Decker, I moved the rack to the middle position and I hit the frozen snacks button. The Black & Decker had to preheat before it could start the cooking process. For the June, there's a lot of frozen foods to choose from. Tater tots, middle rack. All right, 16 minutes to tots. On the June oven, I noticed that the fans kicked on during the cooking process, and this tells me that the programs are very specific to what they're cooking. If I had to guess, the fans kicked on in an attempt to air fry and make the outer edges of the tater tot more crispy. We're almost done with the Black & Decker. I'm a little suspicious. It's only been cooking for about seven minutes. Let me take a temp. I'm kind of curious. Well, I was skeptical, but I think these might be done. They're hot inside, but they're not that crispy. And you can kind of still feel the texture of the shredded potatoes on the inside. These are slightly undercooked. I'm gonna put them back in. And the June is just about done. Kind of the same, slightly undercooked. So I'm gonna put them back in the June and select keep baking. Okay, so hopefully now that the tots have been in twice, they've been heated enough. Black & Decker first. It was definitely more cooked than it was before. I think adding the additional time really helped. Now let's try the June. Good. So I'm gonna hit finish baking on June. So the next time I make tots, it'll make it to that same time. Reheating frozen foods effectively means cooking at a really high temperature. And we can see that because on the frozen foods Black & Decker preset button, it automatically set it to the 400 degrees Fahrenheit, which is on the high side. But something weird's happening here. We know that the Black & Decker toaster oven has lower wattage heating elements, but it took a shorter amount of time to cook these tater tots. That comes down to the smaller size of this oven. When we're cooking at such a high heat in such a short amount of time, this is more efficient than the June because the June is bigger and everything's more spaced out. In this case, when you're dealing with this amount of tater tots, the Black & Decker might be a way to go. On the other hand, if I wanted to make more tater tots, like fill up this whole tray, then the June would have done a better job at that. What this suggests to me is that most high-powered toaster ovens are going to do a pretty good job at cooking tater tots or other frozen foods. So cooking frozen foods may not be a defining factor in choosing which toaster oven you need to buy. Definitely not as much as roasting a whole chicken or broiling a chicken parm, which we're gonna do next. This test is important because broiling is one of the key functions of a toaster oven. We're gonna see if these toaster ovens are powerful enough to get to the temperatures required to melt and brown the cheese. The broiling process is specific to the heating elements on the top of the toaster ovens. Just as a reminder, the June oven has four heating elements up top while the Black & Decker only has two. We have our cutlets here, sauce on top, and cheese on top of that. So what I'm looking for here is consistent melting of the cheese across the entire cutlet. We want to see nice bubbling and that browning effect that you get when broiling. For both ovens, I placed a rack at the highest position. The Black & Decker needs to preheat in order to get to the 450 degrees. The June, on the other hand, turns on right away and I just have to watch to see when it's done. Watching is important here because this process is pretty fast and you run the risk of burning the cheese if you wait too long to pull it out. So the chicken parm has been in the June for about five minutes and it's looking pretty melty. Not too bad, thought it was a little burnt. And the Black & Decker is looking pretty good too. We've got chicken parm. They're both broiled. The Black & Decker has a little bit of a scorched bubble and there's a little bit more browning on this end as well and it got pretty dark there. I think that's mostly user error. It's interesting that the June wasn't more on top of it. Even in the short time that I've had it, it's kind of trained me to rely on it. So it felt a little strange to have to know when it was done. But in general, the results are pretty similar. We know that the June has more heaters at the top of the oven and more powerful heaters in the Black & Decker. So why would these results be the same? One possibility is that it spent less time in this oven. Another Another possibility is the basic design of the Black & Decker. The rack sits closer to the burners, so it's getting more of that heat. But that's also a potential danger. When I was testing at home, the bubbling cheese on the Black & Decker touched one of the heating elements and ignited. See what I do for you guys? The question with broiling is how close to the top can you get, and that's gonna vary from toaster oven to toaster oven. These are both great. They taste exactly the same to me. While the results here are similar, because the June oven has four heating elements at the top, it's possible that a fuller tray would work better on the June oven. If you're making smaller meals, the Black & Decker will probably suit your needs. This is another example when size and capacity might affect your decision when buying a toaster oven. While doing these tests as an engineer, there are a few things I couldn't help but notice. 
software updates. So obviously the June is a smart device and it's clearly the core of what this toaster oven is. The Black & Decker, it's on you to learn how to use it and adjust as necessary to make it work for you. The June will see what you do and learn from it. Not only that, but it's learning from every other person that's willing to share their data. As an example, the original June oven had one program for cooking bacon and after getting user data, it now has 64 individual programs. One thing we mentioned but didn't get a chance to get into is its mobile features. If I know I want toast in the morning, I can set the toast up in the toaster and then turn it on from my bed before I get up. There's a lot that you can do with this and it's worth noting, especially at this price tag, surface temperature. Earlier, I took some temperature measurements while these toaster ovens were on the broil setting. Toaster ovens get hot, that's what they're supposed to do. But the June, not as much. In general, it has to do with the materials. The Black & Decker is a more traditional build and it has stamped stainless steel as the outer shell. Stainless steel is a conductive material, which is great because it doesn't melt, but if you leave your hand on the surface, you're gonna burn yourself. This is like first degree burn type hot. Traditional toaster ovens made with this construction will always have a warning sign on this top surface. On the other hand, the June is made with thick gauge cold rolled steel, which does a much better job of keeping the heat away. It's not just material, it's geometry too. There's a good material buffer between the inner and the outer surface. That means that the heat from the heating element doesn't reach the outer surface as easy. Size. The toaster ovens we tested today, they're both larger than traditional toaster ovens. You can fit a chicken in them. But with that said, the June oven is extremely large. It's gonna take up a lot of counter space and you have to decide for yourself whether or not it's worth losing that real estate. There's an argument to be made for buying a smaller toaster oven. You might not be able to get all the features, but they're more affordable and you can still get a lot done with them. If you live in a small apartment in the city, it might be a better fit for you. Accessories. The Black & Decker oven comes with a sheet pan and a broiling insert. And for this size oven, that's pretty much all you need. The June is $600. It comes with a sheet pan, rack, and temperature probe. It promotes that it has 14 functions, but there are a lot that we couldn't use because we didn't have the accessories. The June doesn't come with three things that I absolutely think should have been included. The roasting rack, the air fryer basket, and the pizza stone. There's a whole bunch of stuff that you could do with this thing if you had the money. You're just gonna have to shell out hundreds of dollars more to get features that feel like they should come with it already. There are so many toaster ovens out there and which one you wanna buy ultimately depends on what you wanna use it for. If you're using it for basic functions, then you could probably go with a smaller, less expensive one. The Black & Decker costs less than $100 on sale currently, but you can get a toaster oven for even cheaper than that. But if you're making larger meals and you're trying to depend on your standard oven less, then you might wanna get something larger and more high powered. And if you wanna pay a premium, then you can go with something like the June that adds smart capabilities. That choice is ultimately up to you to make and hopefully you feel a little bit more informed on how to make it.